I believe without any doubt that there's someone there who can shout a more glorious hallelujah for this 35th anniversary. Let's wave our hands to the God of heavens and bless his holy name. Let's appreciate the one who sits upon the throne of the whole universe, the living God, the one who was, the one who is, the one who will ever be. Let's bless his name. Let's adore him. Let him hear our voice this day. Let's thank him and tell him how much we appreciate him for all that he has done for us in the past 35 years of the Holy Ghost services. Let's bless his name. Let the Lord know that you are really appreciative. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We honor you, Lord. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise God. Praise God. Blessed Father, we bless your name. King of glory, we worship you. The Lord that sits upon the throne of your universe, we thank you today. The wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the Lord who was, who is, who will ever be, the Lord who speaks by decrees, the Lord of the Holy Ghost services, the ever faithful, the never failing. Accept our thanks and prayers in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for proving yourself over the years. We want to thank you for adding another year to the life of our Father and the Lord. We want to thank you for helping him all the way. We want to thank you for your strength upon his life. We want to thank you for our mommy in the Lord, his partner. Lord, we worship you. Be thou exalted forever in the name of Jesus. Today, all we have come to do is to say thank you. May your name be glorified forever. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed and everybody we say i like to th begin by thanking our father and the lord and our mother and the lord for giving us this unique privilege to bring this word of thanksgiving at this landmark service we pray that the almighty God who has always kept you will always be there for you in the name of Jesus. I will lift up my eyes. I will lift up my eyes. This has been our theme all the way since we started the solemn assembly. God of heaven and earth himself has shown us clearly that those who lift up their eyes unto him, they will not be put to shame. But because this is a Thanksgiving service, we look at Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. The four and twenty elders fall down before him 
that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. I found that the Lord had realized that the living God created him for his pleasure. And he lives for that pleasure every day of his life. And that's the reason why we've come to give God exceptional thanksgiving on this very day to the God of the whole universe who for the past 35 years has shown to us that those who decide to live for his pleasure, he will also show up for them. He has shown up for him and for all of us time and again. And he's never tired of showing up for us. From the scriptures, we seek directions through the lives of the saints of old who through faith have subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, Obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. These saints of old revealed to us the efficacy of God's word and the potency of his promises. This morning, when our mommy was reading the scripture, Psalm 105, verse 1 says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. That's the reason why. principles that he lives by. The principle of holiness. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 Hebrews 12 14 says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. He has made up his mind that he will follow peace with all people even when it is to his own detriment sometimes. He has made up his mind that he will not allow anything to come between him and his God. It's a principle that he lives by on daily basis. The principle of holiness. The principle of following peace with all people. It's principle of humility. The principle of humility. According to James chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 10. James chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 10, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he seeth, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. All over the world, it is known that to the glory of God, he is exceptionally humble. He will say, sir, to everyone. God says we should make known his deeds among people. God has given us an example to live by, to show to us that the word of God can be real in people's life. His principle of sacrifice, his principle of agape love. We will also look very briefly at the purpose of his life. He has discovered his purpose. And that is one of the reasons why we have come to thank God today. That God sent someone to the world who understands his purpose. And his purpose is to place the one who has chosen him. According to Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, Philippians 3 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, that I may know him, 
That is always his purpose. Hebrews 11.5 reveals to us that Enoch, before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. That was the purpose of Enoch, and that is the purpose of Enoch of today. He has made up his mind that he will please the one who has chosen him all the time. It doesn't matter what it cost him. We will look very briefly and we thank God for the, his passion. You want to talk of somebody who is passionate about what God has called him to do? We have a case study. What is his passion? To preach the gospel with evidence following. And that's the reason why he lives that life of sacrifice, of prayer, the life of relying absolutely on the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Mark 16 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. That's what we see here. Because he's passionate about that. That's what we see all over the world. As he goes around carrying the message of the one who has called him. He's passionate about seeing signs following. And God has honored his word through his life. He's passionate about winning souls. Any program that does not involve soul winning, you will not see him there. He's passionate about bringing souls to the kingdom. He's passionate about warning backsliders. He's passionate about preparing our people ready for our bridegroom. He's passionate to be used of God to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed, to see the manifestation of all this in the life of people, and much more. And we see it happening in all Holy Ghost services all over the world. That's why we have come again today to thank the Almighty God for his life, for his persistence and dogged determination. You're looking for someone who is persistent. Someone who is doggedly determined to ensure that what God has called him to do is achieved. This program is an evidence of persistence and sacrifice. When he was telling us of all the things that happened from the very moment when the Holy Ghost service started, oh, it appeared as if it is roller coaster. Everything just went on smoothly. Oh, you can tell the story of 35 years in 35 seconds. But is he as smooth as that? It's been a journey filled with all forms of sacrifices. A journey filled with all forms of pains. A journey filled with all forms of determination. He had made up his mind that whatsoever it cost him, he will achieve what the master has asked him to do. And that's the reason why time and again he will tell us. According to Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this is one thing. He is a man of one thing. This one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I rest forward. So time and again, he will tell us, we have not started yet. We have not started yet. Because the one who had called him had shown him the future. It's my prayer today that for someone who is listening to this message, may you see your future. Let your hymn be louder. We have come here today to thank God for the kind of partnership that he has forged. Remember, I have given us four Ps already. I have told us about principles. I have told us about purpose. I have told us about passion. And I have told us about persistence and dogged determination. We are thanking God for the partnerships that he has forged. The partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a senior partner. Beginning from the moment that the Lord chose him to ascend to the leadership of this particular denomination. 
at a certain meeting, he told us that the Holy Spirit told him, up to now, I have been resident. From now, I want to be president. If that is going to happen, Reverend Doctor must go. You must be known simply as pastor. And because he wants that particular shape, Reverend Doctor disappeared. He was ready to do all to please the one who had chosen him. He was ready to give anything. Because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hence, the Holy Spirit took him over and had been leading him one step at a time. A few days ago, I cast my mind back and remember specifically, almost 40 years ago, when he told us that the time is coming, that when the Redeemed Christian Church of God is holding a program in Nigeria, if you don't book your, your flight on time, you won't get flight. Almost 40 years ago, that can only be by the Holy Spirit. By that time, we were less than 1,000 in the whole of Nigeria. Few people, insignificant and unknown, but the Holy Spirit showed him the future because he had forged partnership with the Holy Spirit. And on that day, while he was talking about the fourth dimension of ministry, he revealed to us, the time is coming when we will have representatives among you here who will be heading continents. Many of us by that time, we didn't know the way to Ikeja. But he spoke to our lives. He spoke vision. He spoke into our future. He lifted us up from the littleness that we were to begin to aspire for greatness. The transformational leadership in him transformed us from weaklings to strong people. Today, God had used him to raise a group of ministers who are doing wondrous works all over the world. Partnership. You need that partnership. He fought partnership with his wife. His jewel of inestimable value. A mother in the Lord. Who has stood by him all these years. Mommy has modeled what it means to be a true helpmeet. We have had pastor's wife who will say, when I married you, I didn't marry a pastor. And I didn't say I want to marry a pastor. They were not married as believers. But the moment she knew the direction that her husband was going, she followed all the way. Time and again, Mommy will say, Baba, I need to so we pay. The moment she says that, what she's telling you is that the way that is going, that is where I'm going. That is a lesson for all the women folk. That's the reason why the Bible says, Proverbs 31, 27 to 29. Proverbs 31, 27 to 29. She looketh well to the ways of her household. And eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praised her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excel them all. To our mommy, we want to say you are truly an excellent woman. Daddy has forged partnership with other ministers. The Holy Ghost service started in, in 1986. Sometime around 1988, he discovered that the way the Holy Ghost was moving, he would not be able to do this work alone. So he called on the elders of the church, the members of the Supreme Council, that they would be working with him along that line. And he chose two of us 
Pastor Israel Abaton and myself to join that group. I remember that day very well, like yesterday, when we were going around the altar. The altar used to be central in those days. And daddy was leading us to go around the altar. I was like a small boy running after the elders. I could remember distinctly till today what God had used him to do. Every month, he was hiding more people. He was hiding more people. Today, there are hundreds of thousands of ministers all over the world who have been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit through the ministry that the Lord had committed to him. We should make known God's stage among his people by looking at physical case studies among us. And that's the reason why we have come to thank God today. It's possible that as you are sitting there, you have not forged that particular partnership. Anytime that is inviting you to the Lord Jesus, what he's saying is that this is a partnership that changed my life, that changed my destiny. This is a partnership that defines everything. And when you hand over your life to the Lord Jesus, you are saying, Lord, I want you to be the senior partner of my life. I want you to go forward to lead. I will follow. And there is no way Jesus will be your senior partner and you will fail. No way. No way Jesus will be your senior partner and you'll be defeated. No way. No way Jesus will be your senior partner and storms will overcome you. It's not possible. That is the reason why this money, you have no option but to seek that partnership, to hand over your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, I'd like you to stand up on your feet. If you are within a church setting like here, I'd like you to stand up if you want that partnership, you want to hand over your life to Jesus so that it becomes your senior partner. And go towards the altar, wherever you are. If you are alone in the house, go move towards your television. Something is about to happen. Something that Jesus has been waiting for all these years. It's time for you now to take that decision. If you are within this auditorium, stand up. And then come towards the altar. You want that partnership in your life. You want to forge that partnership. You want the living God to take over your life. Absolutely and completely. Wherever you are, stand on your feet and come towards the altar at this point in time. Because we shall be praying within the next one or two minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. If you are coming, please come very fast. Come very fast. Come very fast. God bless you. As you are stepping out. God bless you as you are stepping out. The God of the whole universe himself is the one who is inviting you to this partnership. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. This is your day. Decades from today, you also you will be able to say, one day, I forged this partnership with Jesus. And my life had never remained the same. Thank you. As you come forward, begin to pray and call upon the Almighty God. That he will step into your life today. He will save your soul. And he will make you his child. His son, his daughter. Make sure that you pray. Pray that prayer. It's possible that maybe you have taken that decision before. But you have not been living for him. You've been rising. You've been falling. This is the time to ensure that you make amendments. So that he can become your senior partner. He doesn't want to be senior partner to unserious people. But it will be your senior partner if you make up your mind. Say, Lord Jesus, wherever you lead from now, I will go. If you want to be restored back to him, you also can join this particular group. Brethren, let's stretch our hands towards this, our beloved brothers and sisters. and Let's pray and call upon the almighty God. Wherever you are, all over the world, we are praying for you at this point in time. And we can assure you that the living God 
will answer your prayer. As the almighty God that we are praising today on behalf of our Father and the Lord, I turned him to be a worldwide phenomenon. The almighty God will also do something new in your life. Blessed Father, we want to thank you. There is none like you. We worship you. We exalt you. What a good God you are. We thank you that we have a case study that we can see, that we can touch, that we can behold. Someone who had proved that your word is true. Father, I accept our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Lord of heaven and earth, your children have come forward. We ask, O Lord, that you will save their souls. We pray, my Father, my God, that every one of them, Lord, hey, as their personal Lord and Savior, you will write their names in the Lamb's book of life. We pray that their life will never remain the same again. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And in your kingdom, we pray, none of us will be found wanting. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody will say, God bless you, brethren. Those of us who have come forward, we have someone there who has a sign board who will lead you to where pastors will be praying for you. They will also collect your names and your addresses on behalf of our Father and the Lord who will be praying for you every day from now on. So you, we want you to, uh, to be attended to by the counselors now. The Lord bless you. Let's put our hands together for these our brothers and sisters. God bless you. May you also become a case study.